Hello people, and welcome back to part 31 of Ilos, our modded city Skylines build. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Uh, please excuse my voice for today, um, I have come down with COVID, and yeah, I'm just all ill and congested and nasally, so you have the poorly egg voice today, so my apologies. <laughs> uh, but either way, thank you so much for all the support last week, um, when we ended up building uh, the Ilos Sky Harbor. Um, really well received this video, so thank you so much, I'm really glad that you all uh, enjoyed it, and indeed it fits really nicely into the little northern stretch of Ilos's downtown district, doesn't it? And there's uh, still lots of work to do around here, of course. Uh, there's still the big cargo side to properly develop and add in today as well. Alongside today's build, uh, which is going to be the ore refinery, uh, and we've got some really cool ideas in store today, and it's really going to continue the industrialization uh, of this part of the map, as today's build is going to add lots of these very classic smokestacks uh, into the skyline and indeed possibly uh, my new favorite sunset view uh, from this point as well from the testing for this build but we're by a river we're building an oil area for the first time with mods so fusing and move it are really going to help us improve these refinery spaces alongside some more cool uh, cargo uh, rail yard vibes to bring in as well so nice space to work with let's build the ilos oil refinery shall we Okay guys, as always, I like to get started with some initial road network frames. I'm going to come uh, into my industrial section and we're going to grab some medium industry road from the industries DLC. I'm going to come off no road guideline here, just while we get ourselves set up. So we've got some really cool um, rail junctions to be working with today. Uh, we should have quite a few nice ideas in store for this build. So once we've got some initial frames drawn out, let's come back onto the road guideline with a curve tool. And then we can just connect ourselves nice and sensibly into everything else that's going to lie around here. I uh, would eventually also like some cargo rail to come through this area too, so let's pre-prepare that. I'm going to grab uh, a little bit of anarchy here too, with no road bending. We're going to come straight out here. I'm going to create a road crossing uh, with the, the rail. And then this will come straight through, all the way up here as well, alongside turning into a bridge, of course, as we come uh, over the river, going back down to ground. And then here we will come down ever so slightly, probably by about minus three. And then again, connect that with a level crossing. And then we can now feed this uh, into some airport cargo, which will reside over this side uh, over here in a second. What we also want to do with this bridge here as well, again, just to amend our infrastructure together. Uh, we use the real tools to force into uh, different upgrades. Again, different size lanes as and when we need them. There we go. Of course, move it will... Uh, help out with the layers that are trying to merge into themselves. We'll also turn this into elevation. Okay, so just sort of our interchange ramps. This should be a little bit more acceptable now. Okay, wonderful. And these roads are not actually compatible with the American ones, are they? So we will have to switch these out. Let's just go for a cheeky bit of six lane should be okay for right now, I think. This should be what we're after. There we go. So we'll just upgrade into the asymmetricals as we go into the crossing. And excellent shout out last episode. I did not move the asymmetry turn into the junction. <laughs> Very well spotted. Thank you for uh, pointing that out. I appreciate it. Yeah, just amended our junctions now to flow nicely. And that uh, they should uh, give us a cargo line directly into the oil refinery build and uh, eventually uh, the cargo uh, port as well. So uh, lots more import and export capacity for ILOS is now available. Again, I'd also like to bring in um, a little junction off of this one here to accommodate our new rail friends. We'll come onto the straight tour at this point, hopefully snapping into a grid. There we go. And then we'll do another curve tour into the junction. Uh, node controller will do wonders for us here. Let's stretch everyone out. Okay, lots of nice, big, important sort of industrial crossings. Um, Perfectly detailable with chain link fencing, some industrial props, and indeed the appropriate placements of all our oil refinery assets today as well. Okay, so again, you know, we've learned over the course of City Skylines now when and where we should be using rail crossings. Uh, they do have a place within the game, and uh, they do give quite a nice aesthetic to the network as well. So certainly worth factoring in. Oh, and that, you're just a huge lover of the view <laughs> from the skyline from here, right? How nice is this? Just, oh, yes, please. <laughs> so good. So happy with it. Alright, cool. Let's discuss some asset placement, shall we? Okay, so for the first time, we're building an oil refinery, um, which of course gives us the uh, ability to fuse and shift and mold assets together as to how we want them. 
which is something I've always wanted to do with an oil refinery um, because they're such large, expansive complexes and that can be difficult for most of the time uh, to replicate in the vanilla game. So I'm just going to bring, let's turn off uh, Snap in here as well. Uh, the petroleum refinery itself, of course, the unit factory, this has to be a part of this build. And I think I'm just going to enjoy its orientation right up against the road here. It's going to give us a really nice sort of industrialized theme as we come out of the airport build here. So I'm happy with that, okay. Also partners quite nice with the monorail through this area as well. Fantastic. So we're going to have that there. And then again, considering, I'm actually essentially here kind of building the road rather than the oil refinery itself. Um, what would also like to appear here uh, is the large crude oil tank farms from the, uh, what's it called, DLC as well. So let's bring these together. And again, we're going to fuse them together with move it. Let's just hold control so we get a much more precise movement. Then I'm going to spin these around. And then again, I want them to be orientated so they're like this, all right? So we're really decorating this main arterial road in and out of the city. And I do want a little bit of open desert space here as well. We're going to do something quite fun with the perimeter today. Okay, and then again, I can do something similar now by switching down to the uh, small crude tank farm. Let's go ahead and spin this around too. And then we'll see what we can do. Let's go ahead and, again, line the fencing up with the road because we know we're a huge lover of this at this point. Okay, and then that's going to shift the silo pattern for us as well, obviously slightly. It's going to create a little layer of depth in it. But again, it continues to add to the very heavy uh, industrialized vibe that we're trying to generate down this area. Cool. So we'll leave that there to set in for right now. Uh, let's come back into that industry stuff. Uh, we'll actually create the industry area itself. So again, I'm thinking, I want this here. Yes, we will name this after one of our wonderful patrons as well. We're going to name this uh, Refinery Earth. <laughs> after our uh, wonderful Belgian subscriber miner, um, who is a really uh, trusted and valued member of our community. Thank you so much for all your support, mate. Really appreciate you, and uh, I hope you enjoy the Alice Refinery, named after your good self. Further asset considerations, I'd like some of these storage units uh, also here as well. So what I'm looking to do here is to almost piece together sort of the border made out of the assets, if that makes any kind of sense. I hope that it does. Again, we'll align our fencing so we're where we want to be. And then I'm actually going to use a stretch of oil fencing to connect together. Okay, and that just chisels out a much more interesting perimeter around a very heavy industrial facility and complex now, doesn't it? I think it's really going to help us. So, well, again, lots of overgrowth and grasses to be had. For a little bit of yes, please. Okay, let's go to our oil roads. I'm going to grab uh, the industrial one first, actually. Yes, let's go for... Uh, so let's go for one of the asymmetricals, I think. Um, we'll come into three units. Yes, we'll use these. Um, let's come down this side. Yes, there we go. And again, there's lots of uh, wonderful uh, IMT to be had here too. Uh, come our deeds high in time lapse uh, today, which IMT has had a wonderful quality of life improvement today, everyone. And um, with fencing and uh, decorative networks now available in the mod, just uh, truly fantastic. We'll, we'll have a little look at that today too. Cool, so let's draw out some frames. Um, we'll actually keep this one going right the way through the facility and then we'll upgrade it into different pieces as and when we need it. We'll come into our industrial roads again and let's go for a touch of one unit. Okay, we'll sort of move down in size a little bit here. And then we can connect all of these guys in. Uh, you will want a little dirt road connection as well. The spit at the front here can be surface painted to help match that kind of dusty old yard. Okay, we can trim off again. Because we're on the north, east, south, west of our service painter, it should behave itself a little bit more. Very nice. Let's come back into this road here now again. again. I'd like to bring it just in front. Let's go off the road length here as well. Yeah, we'll give a connection to the refinery too, and then this should connect in near enough perfectly. We we'll just want to give a little bit of move it there to bring it into position. And then this little feeder road. I can now head back to the main road in the system. I think we can probably forward another road through the middle here as well. And then definitely over this side. And then what we'll do, and with all these little road networks now, is just square everyone off and then uh, indeed stretch everyone out with node controller. And we'll see what an impact this has on our little industrial road networks. And um, once combined with a touch of the old faithful uh, surface painter as well. 
um, it's just going to give us sort of little sections of curved concrete that are just really going to add so much more to a modded industrial build like this. And we haven't really done too much modded industry in Alice at all. We did the farmland, which was a long time ago, wasn't it? That was, and no, it's not really particularly heavy industrialized space, is it? It's relatively calm and sort of open and quite green. Whereas this is the, the polar opposite, isn't it? You know, this is grey extraction of the black gold from the earth and it's all nasty and pollutive and made out of concrete and steel. So quite interested to play with this vibe for the first time in modded today as well. Should be quite fun. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so now what I'd like to start doing is the fusing of the different uh, industry assets together. Because we can do some truly, uh, truly wonderful things uh, with these. So with the two cracker plants, we're going to bring them uh, with their main buildings back to back. Okay, again, a little bit of mover and control at the same time will give us a little bit more precision where we need it. And then what I'd like to do uh, with these assets now is create a sense of facility by positioning the fence edges of each of the main assets together. So it gives us alleyways and little points of access throughout all this very heavy uh, sort of, you know, or production buildings. So again, I'd like this one to uh, come straight down. There we go. Let's come back into move it and grab our two cracker plants. And then just adjust them now to be within the frame. There you go. So see how that just gives us like a little bit of alleyways between all this very heavy refinery infrastructure. That's really what I'm looking to have happen today. And there's really endless variations of these now. Um, really cool things, especially like the um, paralysis plants. Okay, these two work really nicely together. You place two of them down and then spin one around by 90 degrees and then line up their fences so they're flush with the road and the fence next to it. We can just get a nice little sort of open courtyard vibe here and then if we spin it around again at the correct orientation we can just really start to detail out these areas. Uh, I also know that a oil industry maintenance building that works tremendously well again within these assets because we can just fuse their fencings together and it just adds Oh, it's just so much more satisfaction to the game. <laughs> just being able to see all this sort of infrastructure come together. Just be like, this is such basic modding as well. Like, this is Industries DLC plus Move It, basically, right? A little bit of anarchy. Just world of difference. Yeah, huge world of difference. Okay. So the process of fusing assets together uh, is really going to be appreciated here, I think. Okay. Uh, again, we'll carry on uh, going for it. Uh, let's go for a couple of the uh, petrochemical boys, all right? And we're going to spin these around again. And I almost want to use these now as a crawl in height out of the refinery, okay? So let's go ahead and remove these frames. And then I really just want them to be sat together in this sort of way. I think I'm going to be happy with that. And then what that gives us now is a much greater expanded petroleum refinery, doesn't it? When we piece together the assets like that and consider the orientations and positioning um, what a difference that makes to what to me now looks like a proper oil refinery. It's large and it expands and it flows around the area and of course you can take this in varying different shapes and sizes of course. The same process this time again but for the waste oil refining plant uh, instead of the oil sludge paralysis one. So just so many finagleable shapes now. Here we can maybe find a little spot within the refinery here for it. Maybe let's nudge these two out a little bit and then we'll spin this one around so we can have it face this side. Again, we can create little alleyways between the infrastructure, like the cargo containers here and then the fencing. We'll also grab the road to help feed back through as well and just provide a base frame for access for all of these assets. Of course, we'll worry about final positionings within that road network come the end. There you go, but let's just bring these down now. Very nice. We can also amend these to come back into position over there. And then maybe we can squeeze in one more asset now. How about some of the uh, crude oil storage? Okay, I think this will be quite sweet. This should uh, hopefully do us a job. Okay, and then here we have now the final product of all of that fusing. Okay, all the different rotations and angles, factoring in the positionings of the joining of fences to create a little tiny more walkable, detailable spaces like at the back out here. Just 
immense <laughs> satisfaction. God, it improves the industry's DLC so much, especially with a build like the oil refinery. Um, just yes, please. So, you know, if you want my sort of final configurations, if anyone wants to follow along, you've got two petrochemical plants, a crude oil storage cavern, two waste oils, two uh, naffa cracker plants, and then two oil sludge paralysis plants too, alongside the maintenance building next to the petroleum refinery. And a whole bunch of storage here as well to keep everyone supplied and fed with the old black gold. And already really huge facility, isn't it? So impressive. There is another building I want to include here today. And this is going to be a touch of garbage processing from one of the content creators pack. The waste disposal unit from the Japanese one. So quite a bold choice, right? Quite a bold one, this one. But uh, I'm hoping that it can be allowed to settle into the build at least. So... It's also got one of these sort of little tunnels on it where we can anarchy a road through. So I'm quite happy for that to happen. It also gives us some car parking in here too, which is fine. But it's just the angle of the building. It settles in really nicely. It does look as though some sort of perhaps head admin or, you know, places that are needed to run a refinery that aren't the actual processing of the oil itself. Uh, and that little kind of really black slit window, really thin one, really just ties it together, doesn't it? <laughs> I can't quite describe it, but big fan of it, big fan of it. Very appropriate building for the build, I think. So I'm definitely going to be including uh, the waste disposal unit from the Japanese content creator pack, which plug for Instant Gaming. If you don't have it, go pick it up down below. Super cheap, one of the best content creator packs as well. Cool, so that's a general concept for the refinery. Let's discuss the oil fields now. Okay, so now as we move into uh, the sort of oil field area of this build today, um, what I would like to happen is to have the rural power lines that we uh, are so incredibly fond of uh, kind of flank the oil field here. So we're running with fairly long stretches. We'll of course want to make sure that we uh, factor in any collision points where possible. There we go. And then let's just have this go over there for right now. So I think this should be quite a nice aesthetic of the build. I think, you know, to have the power lines at the front here and some chain link vents along the railway as well. That should be really, really rather splendid, I think. And again, we'll just bring this one straight across and then just hook into here and that should give us some power. Wonderful. So let's discuss the world of oil fields for the first time. So we're going to come back into our rural roads. We're going to grab some of the dirt and we'll just bring this right down here for right now. Hopefully that's not too obtuse, is it? Let's maybe go for another angle. There we go. And then we'll just generally draw off some sort of framage so we can position various different oil collection facilities. Uh, so of course we actually want to paint out the resource because we're uh, playing modded now. We can decide exactly where our oil uh, appears in. And then the oil texture within this theme is almost like a tainted and a saturated sand. Um, it's a very nice colour and indeed it's going to give us a little bit of differentiation uh, in the sand around the refinery. Almost as though it almost has had kind of that, um, I'm not sure what the correct term is, but around oil derricks, you can almost get like the residue sort of spitting out of them, can't you? And it taints the, the sand. If anyone's ever seen um, Jarhead where they uh, burn the oil derrick and it almost starts to rain oil, uh, you'll kind of know what I'm talking about. And it gives us that sort of aesthetic, doesn't it? You know? Really sort of wide oil refinery vibes with a slightly more tainted sand out the front. So what I'd like to happen internally, uh, let's come back into our oil again. We're going to be doing plenty um, of fusing here again today. So let's go ahead and grab a large oil drill, a small one, and then a large oil pump. And please don't forget about the world of regular zoned oil industries either here today. Um, there's some really nice assets that work very well. Some of these are actually better oil drilling looking things than the ones that come with the DLC, which is the only case of that happening in the vanilla game. But there you go. Let's not forget them. But again, what we can do here is just start to fuse them together by analyzing, you know, what sides of the asset are going to sit nicely. So why don't we fuse uh, this little side building into this one over here? And then we'll grab the oil pump, we'll spin this around and then include this little sort of back shed side building as part of the Sort of little oil extraction pump station, whatever you want to call this. Okay, and then we'll bring 
a little box around it. Of course, little nuances of uh, the old node controller just to widen off uh, a few of those curves so they're not quite as boxy. And again, with little nuances of uh, surface painting out. You can flash these out, or they're not all the way around like that. It's too much. And of course, prop detailing, some chain link fencing around this as well. It gives us much more personality in a little oil extraction area, doesn't it? So we've got two oil gels here that are actually serving the uh, industry's DLC refinery, which is exactly what we want to happen, so that's good news. So I'd like to briefly install uh, some cargo rail at the uh, industry side of the airport. Let's go ahead and give these a connection. Also, over here as well. And then we can just change this one here to a bend. And there we go, that will merge the two textures for us. So we'll have some cargo uh, distribution and export and import functionality via rail over that side now, which is fine. Uh, yes, you guys will be getting supplied in a minute. Everyone just wants oil, right? What is it you need? You need petroleum, plastic and metal. So we're producing plastic and petroleum through our various buildings here. So we should be okay for that. So it's really metal, which we should be producing metal, if I remember correctly. Let's head back over to the rural town. Well, yes, we have some ore grinding mills, so we should be okay for metal. That should eventually be uh, distributed to the ore refinery. Okay, and then I'd like to use the opportunity here again to uh, introduce a, another rail station in. So we're going to come back into the airport. So you can actually place the airport cargo train stations outside of an airport area, which is something that I actually haven't realized before. Um, and this gives us tremendous flexibility to import and export uh, from this area without having to use yet again just a regular vanilla sort of boring cargo station guys i do apologize for the incredibly nasally congested sore throat voice today everyone but i think i'm happy with that right let's um go ahead and grab uh, some rails and we'll get this hooked in yes let's just go for so this one would be good if we could actually feed it into the same intersection here. Um, this should allow us to settle in a little bit easier. Yeah, and then blend off that orange one there too. And then what we'll do with this second one is just allow it to come in after sort of like 10, 12 units or so. There we go. And then hopefully just a little bit of curvature here should help us settle in a little bit easier. And then of course where we do get the tearing, uh, we'll just... Uh, bring this down into a middle section with node controller and then that will blend everyone together for us cool so we can have cargo rail in here too so let's go ahead and grab some more industrial road we'll give this one a main connection onto the road network so let's remove some of these dirt frames and we'll make sure that this does indeed have a road connection We'll sort this out with terraforming and some keys, I think. We'll just sort of leave it there for right now. So really heavy industrial vibes. And of course, what we can do um, is bring in some of our old faithful uh, industrial detailing uh, like we have over in the rail yards over this side with uh, some of the, the parts up trains or very sort of heavy cargo vibes, isn't it? So I'm definitely on board for bringing those into this area too. Okay, so work that can be factored in for our detailing time lapse. Otherwise, we're starting to get some nice cargo vibes coming in now, which is good. I'm happy with this. So we've got the sort of the main refinery stuff sorted. This is what's going to process all our materials. And we're starting to get some oil trucks come in now, which is good. So what are these guys doing? They're delivering oil products to the cracker plant. That's great. And then owner is oil industry storage. So interestingly enough, these oil storage facilities over by the baseball stadium and the Shaky Snake County Fair are actually currently supplying the oil refinery with oil, which makes sense. There's no reason why that wouldn't be surprising. But yeah, it's not actually pulling from these just yet. It's uh, actually taking it from the mark grid. Which is fine, you know, supply is supply. I don't really care where it comes from. So let's now return to the idea of these little oil field designs, shall we? Let's come ahead and grab another one in. We'll add a connection in here. And then we'll bring it off on another angle. Let's give ourselves sort of a base a platform to work off. So we'll go for perhaps two of these back to back because they do have very distinct back to back capabilities I think don't they? Or we could even fuse their main buildings together. If 
we wanted to expand the asset by a considerable amount, really bulks it out a little bit, doesn't it? Okay, got some goods issues over in the city there as well. Hopefully this build will help with that today. Okay, just notice you actually don't have a road connection. Is that because you're a touch too far down? There we go, that's fine. It's not messed up the thing, has it? No, we're okay. Okay, so I'm happy with that there. Yeah, these little things also work really nicely as well. We can uh, spam down a few of these and sort of rotate them around to get different positions. It's almost like a lot of these assets with the um, vanilla industry stuff kind of comes almost like pre-detailed because they've all got these little props around them. There's also this one here which has no preview icon um, but actually operates as just a little mound of generic in industry props which is great, you know. <laughs> we can... We can get on board with that, okay? So let's go ahead and throw some of these silos down in a little sort of combination pattern here together. All right? Very nice. We've also got some of these as well, which is maybe a little bit more on the two vanilla side for me. It's a, like dino oil on it. I, <laughs> I don't really want to say it. I don't really want to say that, but okay. Okay, and then let's maybe have this one around the back here too. And we'll factor in it's fusing into the main sort of central you know, building that now makes up this complex. And then why don't we also make it functional with the Industries DLC as well by grabbing in a couple of these smaller oil pumps to spin around it, which will also add a little bit of animation uh, into this, or oil well, I guess it's called, isn't it? I don't know why I keep calling it, or when it's quite clearly not, <laughs> but that's fine. Okay, and then again, little bits of sand and plenty and plenty of uh, chain link vents in, in and around these little oil areas will really help settle in a little bit more, I feel. Okay, and then also touches a nerve controller uh, on pretty much every single junction throughout the complex today, just so it doesn't look quite as boxy. Just sort of rounds off these corners on the edge of the build here, you know. I, think I much prefer it. But you get the general idea, piecing together industry assets from the DLC and indeed the base game counterparts. Um, just really nice. Oh, hello, hello, hello. Are we okay? Okay, yeah, let's do some traffic module work here. Um, this configuration is not correct. So it's coming to TMPA. Um, the, all the traffic lights within the facility can go. They shouldn't even be on in the first place. Yes, there'll be no more out there. Uh, we will also come on to junction restrictions and just tell everyone to go. There's no need to wait here. Please just, yep, yeah, keep going. Go if you're not turning. And then we'll also do... Uh, some dedicated turning lanes here as well, uh, which should hopefully help us out a little bit. And of course, there's plenty of IMT to be had here as well during our D-turn time. That's what hopefully those changes to the junction restrictions. Uh, yeah, there we go. That just clears up the traffic that appears here, doesn't it? Okay, and that little asymmetrical road is helping distribute back onto the main road too. Okay, we're loving the aesthetic of the cargo trains coming past here as well. That's a really uh, welcome addition, isn't it? Passenger trains too. Yes, please. Oh, yes. <laughs> loving, loving the skyline from this angle, everyone. The uh, industrialization of this part of the city has uh, really, really pleased me, especially with this in the foreground here too. Just like, really tremendous. Super happy with it. Super happy with it. Cool. So, of course, this will receive cargo once it becomes powered. That's absolutely fine. Um, there is one more thing I'd like to do before we look at D-Time time ups today. And that is the introduction of some base game uh, vanilla keys, which is appropriate, I know, right? Because we usually used to sort of using the content creator ones now. Well, not anymore, everyone. We are going to be using the vanilla ones. We're going to grab all of this here. Let's go for nodes, at least, anyway, with the marquee tool. Okay, we're going to set it to the same height as the road. We'll use move it to extend this down. And then what I would like to have here is a couple of fresh water outlets. So you could actually use the sewage outlets here, but because of that massive sewage build that we did a few episodes ago now, it's just not needed. <laughs> I don't need sewage. So I think what I'm going to do is instead use at the fresh water outlets and treat them as though there's some sort of sludge dumping ground for uh, the refinery okay and then what we can do on top here is 
continue to surface paint out our designs. It looks as though it's some sort of purposely built kind of concrete landmass next to the river. And then we can do little bits of admin, you know, perhaps a touch more of the assets from the industries DLC, like maybe another oil storage cavern here might be a bit too big. Um, the maintenance building is actually something I want on the entrance to the oil fields because it has kind of the spare oil derrick parts within it, like this stuff here. Um, I think it'd be quite appropriate, you know, like if something was to break down in one of these oil fields, then they would knit back to the main building and just grab an extra part to replace it and so on and so forth. Okay. But again, it's a vibe that can be expanded over here as well. Uh, probably a little bit of office or maybe some of the workers barracks would go nicely here too um, if we can paint this area out so of course these will definitely want to be bobbed because the trees really clash here with all the concrete but it can almost be some sort of admin for the pumps here okay you can come up with ideas and themes and whatnot of course office zoning generic vanilla and industry will all be appropriate within these spaces as well fantastic and i think we'll also fill uh, some car parking within these spaces over here today as well so let's just tie up some facilities now let's bring in these road connections together however guys this does feel like a good place for a detailed time lapse um bit of detail work to do around here today including uh, lots of chain link work in and around the rail and the perimeter of the refinery with lots of overgrown desert vibes in this space here as well uh, to really kind of reinforce the industrialized focus of this build and probably we'll also chuck in another monorail stop here uh, just so workers can get back into a little bit easier because otherwise they have to get off uh, the waterfront and then uh, walk uh, all the way down of course so give it another stop on this line uh, design and combine a few more of our oil extraction areas again using the thought processes that we've done um, combining vanilla and industrial assets together and of course we'll come in with some industrial prop detailing in here today too alongside dropping some more containers in and around the cargo uh, rail over this side Sort out any terraforming inconsistencies that we have over this side. I might also bring the key further down here as well. We'll see. We'll see. <laughs> we'll see what happens. Uh, continue to detail up uh, the mega refinery uh, that sits in this part of the city now. Again, with more industrial and sort of admin detail in these spaces. Uh, bring in some car parking for the workers and some basic industrial themed IMT work around the main intersections. And are you going to take our new line? No, nope, you're still heading to the Margrid. It's interesting to see how the AI is much preferring cargo train terminals as opposed to the airport terminals. Um, only one train has come down here so far. Or maybe it's just the fact that the export demand is being met entirely by the planes, so it's not really having that much cause to use these ones over here. Who knows? It's lost knowledge. <laughs> it's lost knowledge. <laughs> But either way, just back to this area room with lots more, you know, sort of cargo themed detailing and potentially some train yard vibes as well that we've had a look at uh, several times in Ilos now. But otherwise, let's detail at Refinery Yurt and then we'll be right back.
Okay, guys, so let's have a detailing review, shall we? Uh, around the front, we've carried on bringing some chain link vents in and also dropped in a little bit of sort of rundown commercial vibes here. There's a little barbecue place on the outskirts of the refinery, perhaps an old favourite of all the refinery workers can come and get something to eat here during their sort of off break, if you like. Uh, detailed up with lots more overgrowth and indeed our favourite palm patterns in and around the entrance uh, with a big perimeter fence and plenty of no trespassing signs uh, in the actual oil fields itself alongside some generous iron tea for the main intersection as well uh, with some chevrons and dashes carving out the lanes as the trucks come uh, in and out of the area. There is plenty of prop detailing in and around the central fort court with these kind of chemical looking container things alongside uh, some crate uh, decal and shipping container uh, details as well. You know, you'd imagine this is all storing materials and products and chemicals needed for the uh, you know refinement of crude oil, etc. Whatever sort of imagination you need over here, alongside uh, more little bits of detailing over this side as well. Uh, also dropping into warehouses um, to help keep the petroleum unique factory supplied, because uh, I do believe that it is at yeah 150 production right now. So making us a ton of money, which is really good to see. It's finally good to have some of the unique factories actually working. Uh, and then we are storing plastic, uh, petroleum, and metals within the facility itself to keep it nice and stocked. Uh, further around, we're back. We've added in some breakwater rocks in amongst the overgrowth, which adds a really nice alleyway um, behind the refinery itself now. It just allows it to sit in this part of the map a lot nicer, doesn't it? It's just a really nice orientation. And the whole kind of refinery facility uh, vibe uh, came off really, really nicely here with so many different buildings and intricate little alleyways and doors hidden behind fencings. Just what an enormous difference Move It has made to a oil build like this. Just being able to double up the assets and slide them into one another, create different little courtyards and forecourts of detailing that just pop and burst, just absolutely fantastic, and I'm so happy with the look of the expanded oil refinery um, all coming out of the main petroleum refinery unique. Um, enormous lover of this aesthetic. They've also added in some more uh, silos just because I wanted the same aesthetic that we have over this side. You know, just so we can sort of look across and see the silos behind the fencing. Uh, very much a similar vibe uh, wanted over this side as well where we have brought in some more crate detailing. Um, again, just simple prop line tool stuff with a lot of the assets that we've used before and then also thrown in an actual cargo train station here um, alongside uh, the airport one and both of them are actually getting used which is quite nice and uh, looks like this guy's stopping at the cargo train terminal here uh, so nice to see some imports and exports moving in and out of ILOS now that's really going to help our economy and um, because we were starting to slowly fall into the red but this refinery is making a ton of money for us now uh, speaking of which, we now have a fenced off rail yard sitting parallel uh, with the big highway road that comes into town. And again, this could be one of my new favourite views in the city now. Just so happy <laughs> with all of the smoke stacks and the chimney stacks. Just came out really, really superbly. Super, super happy with all of this. And again, some more cargo trains coming and going from the area too. Just, uh, yeah, it's, a, it's been a really nice blend out of high density from the downtown back into sort of industrial desert and it's been a very fun build put together especially with all this overgrowth right in the foreground as well uh, looking over to the wider uh, sort of refinery facility itself uh, further over here we have added in a bp station onto the corner just so there was some petrol over this way and then again just the view to the downtown from this part of the map uh, again we've got some more uh, no trespassing signs here next to the rail crossing with more overgrowth and with appropriate palms and the rural power lines and it just came off so nice <laughs> i'm so 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 happy with it uh, this is definitely one of my favorite parts of town now and um, this whole kind of industrialized overgrown style and um, sitting on the outskirts of downtown ilos has yes <laughs> this probably i think all the chain link vents in um, yeah, really, really over the moon with it. It's turned into a, a wonderful uh, build and has filled this space in uh, really quite nicely. 
However, guys, that is going to do it for today. I would like to thank you all so much for watching. If you've enjoyed, likes, comments, and shares below really help me out. And um, equally as much if you haven't enjoyed it, then please feel free to leave a dislike as well. And um, thank you so much for watching and bearing with the COVID voice today. Um, I hope it hasn't been too unbearable. Um, but yeah, really fun build. A uh, huge, enormous lover of playing with modded industries and um, the access to all the props and move it with, of course, a lot of the DLC assets and including some of the vanilla stuff in here as well today. Um, has given us, I think, what I can declare now as my favourite oil area on the channel. Nothing has beaten this. <laughs> it's a really nice combination of import and export, and it continues to add to the very heavy um, industrialization that is happening in this part of the map. Uh, please do hang around for some cinematics. Uh, this place should hold a really fantastic view looking west back towards the downtown, um, especially at night time, so please do hang around for those. Um, but otherwise, I will shut up and I will leave it there. Let's thank you all so much for watching. As always, enjoy the rest of your day. <laughs>